Today again we are going to continue with the second portion of genetics. Earlier I told you about Mendel's laws. The first law was about dominance. The second law was about segregation and the third law was about independent assortment. Now generally when we follow about genetics, not only these three laws are always followed, there are some certain deviations. So like in the first case, we are going to talk about incomplete dominance. By incomplete dominance, what it means is, suppose if I cross a red flower with a white flower what I get is A pink flower. Now this is called incomplete dominance. Why? It's because I am crossing red flower with white flower. The general rules of dominance states that red is dominant over white. So obviously what is expressed is the red color is expressed. But now what happens is in this particular case in Mirabilis flower this phenomenon is observed that is incomplete dominance so generally what is happening is a red flower crossed with a white flower produces pink flower that means red is not completely dominant over white but rather both are incompletely expressed as a result we're getting a new combination that is a pink flower so this is what it means by incomplete dominance generally according to the law of dominance what we're supposed to get was red flower but this is not the case what we're getting is pink flower so this is what it means by incomplete dominance so this is one particular deviation from general patterns of <coughs> Mendel's laws another deviation or different type of inheritance is co-dominance by co-dominance what it means is both the genes are expressed. So for example, we're going to take into account the cattle. <coughs> if I cross a black cattle with white cattle, what I'm supposed to get is either I'm supposed to get a black or white cattle. But what I'll be getting is neither black nor white, but a roan cattle. Roan means a cattle which has patches of black and white. You've generally seen these type of cattle, isn't it? A cattle having patches of black and white. So in this particular case, the black character is also expressed and the white character is also expressed. So what we're getting is patches of black and white. Since both are being expressed, this is called co-dominance. So generally dominance does not always mean that only one is dominant over the other. It can either be both are incompletely expressed or both are equally expressed. In this case, since both are equally expressed, it is called co-dominance. Hence, we are getting patches of black and white. Again, according to Mendel's laws, what happens is a gene always that is expressed is dominant and the one which is not expressed is the repressed gene. Now, generally this happens 
for a particular character. For example, let's take into account the colors red and white. If red is expressed, that means this red gene is dominant over the white gene. Now both the genes are dealing with color. But in some cases, like this particular phenomenon, epistasis, what happens is a gene, it represses another gene which is completely not linked to this particular thing. To understand this better, let's say gene 1 controls height and gene 2 controls color. Generally what happens is according to this gene 1, tall should be dominant over short. And according to dom no simple laws of dominance, color should be dominant over another color. But in this particular case, that is this phenomenon, epistasis, what happens is a gene which controls a different character suppresses another gene which controls another character. So a gene which expresses itself is called epistatic gene and the gene which is repressed or not expressed is called hypostatic gene. So epistasis means a gene which controls a different character dominates another gene which controls a completely different character. According to genetics, there are simple laws like let's say one gene controls one character only. <coughs> another gene controls another character. Another gene controls a different character. But in some cases what happens is the same gene might control different characters. This particular phenomenon is known as Pleiotropy. Pleiotropy means a phenomenon in which a single gene controls different characters. This is what it means by pleiotropy. According to normal simple laws of genetics, one gene is supposed to control one character only. But according to pleiotropy, a single gene can control many different characters. This is what it means by pleiotropy. Now, earlier in your classes, I talked about alleles. By alleles, what it means is it's an alternative form of a gene. So when we talk about height, let's say you're either tall. So this gene is represented by capital T. And the alternative form of tall is short. This short is represented by small t. So generally there are only two pairs of alleles, capital T and small t. But there are certain cases in which you find more than two ordinary forms of genes. Such genes are called multiple alleles. By multiple alleles what it means is you get different forms of genes. And to understand this better, I'll give you an example of blood group in humans. Generally, when we talk about blood groups in humans, you already know that there is the A group, B group, AB group, and O group. Now we'll understand how these blood groups are controlled by a gene. Blood group is a controlled by a gene I. This I has alternative forms. It can either be IA, IB or IO. IA and IB are equally dominant. 
that means i a is also equally dominant to i b but both i a and i b are dominant over i o so if a person has blood group a his genotype will obviously be a homozygous i a i a or i a i o homozygous both are expressed so the blood group becomes a heterozygous since a is dominant over i o so the blood group becomes a i b i b i b i o gives you blood group b again homozygous b both are expressed heterozygous again i b is dominant over i o so the individual has blood group b but you have heard about individuals having blood group ab so in this particular case you can have a heterozygous ia ib and this is because both are equally dominant so the individual has blood group ab for blood group o the allele will be iyo because io is not a dominant character so it becomes a homozygous io io so all these blood groups are controlled by a single gene ia which exists in multiple forms that is ia ib and io so you don't get two pairs of genes but rather you having three different forms of genes and this come under multiple alleles now there's another phenomenon called complementary genes by complementary genes what it means is for a particular character to be expressed you require two genes gene 1 and gene 2 to represent a particular character for this character to be expressed you require two genes gene 1 and gene 2 so they become complementary to each other the other thing you have to remember is for this character to be expressed both the genes that are involved have to be in the dominant form suppose if g1 is in the dominant form and g2 is in the recessive form then you don't get this same character again if g1 is in the recessive form and g2 is in the dominant form you don't get this character you get this character only when both are dominant this is an example of complementary genes so in order to understand complementary genes better there is a certain variety of sweet pea flowers in which a white flower was crossed with another variety of white flower and what we got was red flower this white flower might be having the gene dominant homozygous cc and this white flower might be having the gene dominant pp so in order to understand this like i said gene c has to be in the dominant form and gene p also has to be in the dominant form both the genes are responsible for the production of a white pigment so how we get red color is this white when acted upon by gene c gives you an intermediate compound this intermediate compound in turn is affected by gene p which itself controls a white character and then due to the mixing of the intermediate compound and the product of gene p on the white compound what you're getting is red color so this red color is produced when only both the genes c and p are in dominant form 
if gene C was in the recessive form, let's say small c, then this intermediate compound is not produced and what you're getting is only a white product. Or if gene P, that is small p, was present in the recessive form, again this white compound is not produced and you don't get a red color. In order to get a red color, both these genes have to be in the dominant forms. So the products of both the genes acting on the final product produces the red color. And this phenomenon is observed in sweet pea. Since both the genes are responsible for the production of the red color, they are called complementary genes. Now the next thing regarding genetics is pedigree analysis. But pedigree analysis what it means is it provides us a history, basically a genetical history about our ancestors. So in order to understand pedigree, there are a few certain rules. Like a box represents a meal and a circle represents a female. If the male and the female are joined, this represents marriage. And the lines that you draw from the marriage are the offsprings. That is either a male son or a female daughter. The first line, you write one. That means generation one. The second line, you write generation two. Now. If the individuals are not shaded, that means these individuals do not have any genetic defects. But if they are shaded, that means the individual is affected. So basically, what this gives us is an idea about the genetical history about our ancestors and pedigree is very important in finding about genetical defects. So after going through all these, I'll be doing a few problems.
So in this question, what is being asked is when a cross is made between a tall plant and a yellow seed, it is heterozygous. Tall plant is crossed with a tall plant with green seeds. tall and green so basically we have to find out which ones are tall and green dwarf and green so this being the parental generations so in order to understand this or to make it simpler for you just write the keys like for example tall is represented by capital T dwarf is represented by small t yellow is represented by capital yellow the yeah, capital Y and green is represented by small y. So basically what we're crossing is the parent that is tall and yellow with tall and green. So the first thing we're going to do is gametes. This T combines with this Y. So you're getting one type of gamete. This T combines with small y. You're getting another type of gamete. Then this small t combines with capital Y, another type of gamut, and this small t combines with small y. Always make sure you form the gametes. Now when you're forming gametes, don't confuse yourself by saying what about TT or YY, because always remember according to the law of segregation, genes controlling the same character, they segregate or separate out during gamete formation so hence you don't get these type of gametes rather you get a combination of different gametes in this case the gametes are capital T combines with small y small t combines with small y no need to go about different y because both y's are small so this combines with this one you're getting capital T capital Y and small y so in this case it becomes tall and yellow one child is tall and yellow this also combines with this one so you're getting tall and yellow this combines with this one so you're getting tall and green again this combines with this one you're getting tall and green there is this one combines with this one tall yellow and this one combines with this one you're getting tall green this combines with this one you're getting short and green so one this combines with this one this one and this one combines over here and this one and this one combines over here. sorry because due to lack of space all these arrows are jumbled up so basically what happens is you have to write the parental generations. That is the ones which are being crossed 
that is tall and yellow with tall and green over here then again you have written all the gametes that are formed from parent both the parents and then you are crossing now remember each gamete from the one parent combines with the gamete from the other parent so hence you are getting these one so if you just look at the characters over here we are supposed to find out how many are tall and green so tall and green we are getting one two three we are getting tall and green three dwarf and green we are getting only one so from this it becomes very clear that basically when you are solving problems always write the keys by keys what it means is which character is represented by which alphabet in this case tall is represented by capital T dwarf is represented by small t yellow is represented by capital Y and green is represented by small y then you write the parental generations and their genotypes then you write the gametes and then finally F1 that is the offspring which you are getting so in this similar pattern you are supposed to solve different problems and I will be giving you a few which you can solve in snap dragon or cross between true breeding red plants and true breeding white flowered plants showed a progeny with all pink flowers so this in the form of a cross now according to this question you are crossing a red flower with white flower and you are getting pink flower so don't get confused because this is an example of incomplete dominance just show it in a cross like I have done earlier another simple problem is
So <coughs> the next problem is work out a cross between a tall pea plant having violet flowers, heterozygous for both, with a dwarf pea plant having white flowers, red the genotypes and phenotypes with the help of a cross. This particular flower is heterozygous. One other one is dwarf pea plant and white flower. So this is obviously homozygous. That means this particular plant, dwarf pea plant, having white flowers is homozygous recessive. So just follow this, solve this. And if you have any problems, then you can text me. So thank you.